In the twilight's gentle grasp, the enchanted forest stands. A realm where the ordinary is unheard of, and the magical is commonplace. As the sky dresses itself in hues of dusk, an old gnome named Eldrin steps out from under an arching toadstool. Tonight is no ordinary night, for the heart of the forest, the eternal source of its magic, prepares to awaken from its centennial slumber. Eldrin, with a long beard as white as the mist and eyes alight with ancient wisdom, moves through the forest with purpose. His steps are silent on the mossy floor, leaving no trace, as if he were one with the very air. He carries with him a lantern crafted from starlight and spider silk. A beacon to summon the guardians of the forest to their sacred duty. With the coming of the night, whispers travel on the wind, through the leaves, and into the burrows and nests of the forest dwellers. Each whisper is a call to the chosen creatures, those entrusted with the secrets and rites needed to renew the heart. Among these are the wise Aurelia, Celestia, the fairy of the luminescent wings, Luna, the noble unicorn, Elara, the dusk weaver, and the stoic sentinel Nocturne. Eldrin approaches a clearing where the earth itself seems to hold its breath, and the stars peek curiously through the canopy above. Here lies the ancient heartstone, the altar where the heart of the forest reveals itself. The stone is carved with runes that glimmer, with anticipation of the coming ritual. Runes that tell the story of the forest's creation, its preservation, and the cycle of its magic. He begins the chant old as time to call forth the guardians. His voice, a melodic baritone, intertwines with the natural symphony of the forest. The fireflies gather, their glow pulsing in harmony with Eldrin's song. While the creatures of the forest pause in their nightly doings to listen, for they know that tonight is a turning of an age. As the last note of Eldrin's call fades into the evening air, a sense of expectancy settles over the forest. The guardians must embark on their quests to gather the mystical components required to rekindle the heart. The dew of dawn, the Only fire the of dawn the sun, could understand, the bloom of twilight, Aurelia found what she sought, the weaves of dusk, and the whispers of the night. Together, these elements hold the key to renew the enchantment that protects and nurtures their verdant home. Part 1 Aurelia's Dawn As the deep blue of night began to soften, the first whispers of dawn's approach rustled the leaves of the enchanted forest. There, in the oldest glade where the trees bore the memories of time, Aurelia, with her gown of woven rose petals, and a crown of morning mist, awoke from her rest beneath the canopy of stars now fading. The enchantress, chosen guardian of the dawn, stretched forth her hands, her fingers aglow with the first touch of light. Today, her ancient duty called her to a task both delicate and profound. To harvest the down's dew, She began her pilgrimage through the forest, her footsteps leaving a trail of blooming flowers. 
a testament to her sacred bond with the land. The creatures of the forest followed at a respectful distance, their eyes bright with reverence. They knew the significance of Aurelia's quest and the part they played in the great cycle. In a meadow where the grass whispered secrets, only the dawn could understand, Aurelia found what she sought. Thousands of dewdrops sparkled upon the blades of grass, each a prism holding the first light. With movements that mirrored the gentle ballet of the cosmos, she gathered the dew with care, ensuring not a single drop of the precious essence was lost. But the enchanted forest was a place of balance. And for every act of taking, one must give in return. And so, Aurelia sang a hymn of gratitude. Her voice the embodiment of the warmth that ushers in the sunrise. The melody carried on the wind, bestowing vitality to the land in harmonious response. With the vessel of dawn's dew cradled in her arms, Aurelia glanced towards the horizon. The sky blushed with hues of pink and orange, heralding the sun's ascent. She knew her sisters and brothers would soon embark on their own journeys. Their success as vital as her own to complete the ritual that ensured the forest's verdancy. Yet, as the sun rose, casting its golden nets upon the world, a shadow flitted at the forest's edge. A reminder that light and darkness were ever in pursuit of one another, and that the heart's awakening could stir foes as well as friends. Aurelia's task was essential, but it was also just the beginning. With the dawn's dew secured and the day's mission accomplished, Aurelia turned back towards the heartstone. The morning had blossomed fully now, the night's mystery replaced by day's clarity. She moved with swiftness, for the dough must be presented fresh. Part 2 Celestia's Radiant Quest The zenith of the sun's arc crowned the day with a brilliance that bathed the enchanted forest in its most potent glow. In the heart of the woods, where the canopy parted to embrace the sky, Celestia, the daylight fairy, hovered. Her wings aflutter with the vibrant energy that only the high sun could bestow. Celestia's task on this momentous day was to capture the essence of the sun's peak. The solar flare, a concentrated burst of life's fire, which would power the heart of the forest for centuries to come. Her hands, delicate and sure, held a crystalline prism. A family heirloom passed down through the aeons for this very purpose. The air thrummed with the songs of birds and the buzzing of bees, all orchestrating the midday concerto. Celestia, with her gossamer gown catching the light, danced across the sky, her every turn coaxing the sun's energy closer to her outstretched prism. Yet the sun's power was not to be taken lightly. Celestia had to weave an intricate pattern of flight one that spoke to the celestial rhythms and honoured the balance between taking and giving. Her path inscribed with the wisdom of the winged creatures who knew the secrets of the air. As Celestia danced, the animals of the forest ceased their midday toil to watch. They saw her spiralling higher, drawing down the sun's fiery essence 
with a grace that belied the great risk she undertook. For a moment the forest stood still, its breath caught in collective awe. With a final triumphant spiral, Celestia caught the sun's flare within her prism. The crystal shone with the intensity of a miniature star, its radiance reflecting in the wide eyes of the woodland audience. The fairy success was met with a chorus of cheers that rustled leaf and bough. A celebration that rippled through the underbrush. Yet as the forest rejoiced, the shadow spotted at dawn's edge crept closer. A whisper of threat on this day of destiny. Celestia sensed the darkness at the periphery of her vision and knew the importance of haste. With the solar flare in her grasp, she needed to reach the heartstone before the shade that lurked could intervene. Her journey back was a descent from the joyful heights of the sky to the sacred earth below. As the sun continued its eternal march towards the horizon, Celestia, with the weight of success, and the light of hope darted through the forest's dappled light. The fairy, keeper of the midday's flame, had secured the second element for the heart's awakening. Part 3 Loon's Moonlit Pilgrimage As the sun's radiant dominion gave way to the moon's gentle rule, Loon, the unicorn of twilight, emerged from his hidden grove. He stepped softly, the forest floor muffling the sound of his hooves, as if he walked on a bed of stars. The knight's cloak adorned his majestic form, making him a part of the dusk. A creature spun from evening's very essence, Loon's quest was sacred as old as the law of the moon cycles. He sought the twilight bloom, a flower of such rarity that it blossomed but once every century, cradling the moon's whispers in its petals. This sacred bloom was the key to unlocking the dreaming depths of the heart of the forest, where its true power lay in wait. Guided by an inner light as sure as the celestial body above, Loon ventured deeper into the woods. His path was illuminated by glowworms and the soft luminescence of nocturnal flowers. A trail of luminescence that marked his way to the hidden valley where the twilight bloom was said to reside. He moved with a grace that belied his size each step an affirmation of his purpose. The forest creatures revered the unicorn, some trailing behind at a respectful distance, silent witnesses to the quest. They held their breath, knowing the importance of Looney's journey and the role it played in the unfolding destiny of their enchanted home. At the heart of the valley, surrounded by ethereal mists and guarded by ancient trees, Loon found the twilight bloom. Its petals shone with an inner glow, a mirror to the sky's twilight hues, with a reverence reserved for the most sacred of rituals, Loon approached, his breath forming misty clouds in the cool air. But before he could reach the flower, Loon was halted by a ring of brambles that sprang up around the bloom. A barrier conjured by the unseen shadow that threatened the forest's tranquility. The unicorn, undeterred, called upon the purity of his intent. His horn aglow with a soft, clear light that cut through the darkness. 
with a touch as light as a feather, Loon's horn met the thorny barrier. The brambles withered. Their dark magic no match for his resolute spirit. He plucked the twilight bloom with the utmost care. Its petals a radiant contrast against his pearlescent coat. And with the treasure secured, he turned to complete the next leg of the ritual. His return was not just a journey through space, but through the waning light. With every step, the unicorn's bond with the moon strengthened, his form shimmering with an ethereal grace. The twilight bloom in his possession, Loon's thoughts were now with the Duskan Weaver, the next guardian, whose task would be to meld the elements of light and dark for the heart's rebirth. Part 4. Elara's Dusk Weaving The sun had dipped below the horizon, and the canvas of the sky was now a masterpiece of twilight's artistry. Elara, the Dusk Weaver, stepped out from her abode within an ancient hollowed yew. Her eyes reflecting the fleeting tapestry of colours that Dusk had to offer. Her mission was to harness the essence of this transitory beauty. A task of delicate intricacy and essential to the heart's awakening. She carried a spindle fashioned from the twilight skies and a loom that hummed with the lingering songs of daybirds and the emerging cries of the nocturnal choir. These tools would help her weave the veil of dusk a shroud to safeguard the heart of the forest from prying eyes, a blend of shadow and waning light. As Ilara began her work, the creatures of the forest gathered, their eyes aglow with the reflected light of her loom. They watched in silent reverence as her hands moved with practised grace, pulling threads from the heart of the fading day and the onset of night weaving them into a fabric that shimmered with the last of the sun's warmth and the mystery of the evening stars. The fabric grew, each thread a note in the symphony of dusk. Elara wove in patterns known only to those who listened to the whispers of time, her fingers dancing over the loom like a maestro conducting an orchestra of lights and shadows creating a harmonious blend that resonated with the forest's soul. But as Ilara worked, the shadows around her deepened, becoming more substantial and urgent, as if the night was rushing to claim the day. The unseen shadow, the dark whisperer of the forest, was growing bolder sending tendrils of doubt and fear to cloud the minds of the watching creatures. Yet Elara remained undisturbed, her focus unbroken. The spindle in her hand spun steadily, the veil taking on a life of its own, glowing with the collective memories of a hundred dusks. She knew the power of the night had to be respected, its embrace essential for the cycle of the forest. But its premature rise could spell disaster for the ritual at hand. As the veil neared completion, Elara lifted her creation towards the sky, offering it to the emerging tapestry of night. The stars themselves seemed to descend, weaving their brilliance into the fabric blessing it with their eternal light. With this celestial blessing, the Veil of Dusk was complete, a mantle fit for the heart of the forest. With the mantle secured, Elara looked to the stars. Now her guides as she journeyed to the Heartstone, her path was lit by the bioluminescence of the forest's flora. 
a natural luminary procession that guided her steps. The night had fully descended, and with it Nocturne's time approached, his role crucial in awakening the heart with the language of the wilds. Part 5. Nocturne's Vigil In the deepest hour of the night, when shadows are longest and the world is wrapped in slumber, Nocturne, the guardian of the nocturnal realm, began his silent watch. His form, more felt than seen, moved through the darkened forest with a grace that belied his formidable presence. His task was the collection of the night whispers, the forest's ancient and secret language, known only to those who thrive under the cloak of darkness. Nocturne, a figure shrouded in mystery, with eyes that held the depth of the night sky, understood the gravity of his charge. The night whispers were not merely words, but the very breath of the forest itself, carrying with it the wisdom of untold ages, the dreams of the ancient trees, and the hopes of the creatures that dwelled within. To gather these whispers, Nocturne ventured to the Elder Glade, a sacred site where the oldest trees of the forest stood. Their gnarled branches and expansive canopies had witnessed the cyclical dance of the season since time immemorial. Here in the heart of their congregation, the whispers flowed freely. A river of voices waiting to be heard. With a reverence born of centuries of guardianship, Nocturne knelt at the glade's centre, his ears attuned to the subtle language of the forest. The whispers were not in words as humans knew them, but in the rustling of leaves. The gentle caress of the wind and the soft footfalls of nocturnal creatures. Each sound a syllable, each silence a space between thoughts. As he collected the whispers, the air around Nocturne shimmered with a faint luminescence the forest acknowledging the significance of the moment. The trees leaned closer, their leaves rustling in anticipation. The very soil seemed to pulse with life, all nature conspiring to aid in his task. But even in this sacred task, the shadow that lurked at the edges of the light grew restless its form coiling in the darkness. A stark reminder of the balance between night and day. Light and shadow. Nocturne, undaunted by its presence, continued his vigil, his resolve a beacon in the enveloping dark. He looked toward the heartstone, its location known only to the guardians, where he would join his fellow sentinels. There, the whispers would be woven into the very essence of the heart, ensuring the forest's magic was renewed, its legacy preserved for another age. His journey back was a procession through the shadowed corridors of the forest, a silent testament to the solemn duty he bore. The Heart's Awakening In the heart of the forest, where ancient magic pulses beneath the earth, the guardians gather around the heartstone. Their quests fulfilled. The air is thick with anticipation. As the essences they've collected, the dawn's dew, the solar flare, the twilight bloom, the veil of dusk, and the night whispers converge above the stone a symphony of elemental harmony. Eldrin, the ageless gnome, steps forward, his eyes reflecting the dawn's first light. 
with hands that tremble with the weight of eons, he weaves the essences into the heartstone, chanting in the tongue of the ancients. The elements swirl and dance, intertwining in a radiant display of light and colour, merging into the stone, their energies pulsating with the heartbeat of the forest. Suddenly, a brilliant light floods the clearing, as if the sun itself has descended to witness this moment of rebirth. The guardians watch in awe as the heartstone's glow suffuses the forest. Its light a balm to every leaf and branch, every petal and fur. The magic of the heartstone spreads, a wave of life and vibrancy that renews the forest's ancient pact of protection and growth. As the light recedes, a profound peace settles over the forest. The guardians, their spirits intertwined with the land they protect, feel a deep sense of harmony within themselves. They've been part of something miraculous, a renewal that binds them even closer to the heart of the forest. Eldrin turns to you, dear dreamer, inviting you to close your eyes and join in the forest's tranquility. Breathe with me, he says softly. Inhale the freshness of the dawn. Let it fill you with peace and clarity. With each breath you draw in the purity of the dawn's dew, feeling it cool and revitalising against your spirit. Feel the warmth of the solar flare, Eldrin guides, as you imagine the gentle touch of sunlight, a comforting embrace that fills you with strength and vitality. Hold the twilight bloom, he continues. Let its essence inspire dreams of beauty and wonder, its luminescence lighting up your inner world. Wrap yourself in the veil of dusk. Let it protect and comfort you, a cloak woven from the serene tapestry of twilight. In this moment of calm, listen for the night whispers. A lullaby of the forest that speaks to the soul, reassuring you that you are connected to the vast web of life, part of the forest's endless story. As you gently open your eyes, Eldrin's figure fades, leaving you in the dawning light of the forest. A renewed sense of peace and wonder in your heart. Carry this tranquility with you the forest seems to whisper. Let it guide your steps and inspire your dreams. The magic of the heartstone, now reborn, is a testament to the enduring cycle of renewal and hope that defines the enchanted forest and your journey within it. Sweet dreams. <laughs>